In this lesson, we're going to go over a few gas collection over water problems, like this one. 37 liters of nitrogen gas was collected over water at 25 degrees Celsius at 790 torr. The vapor pressure of water is 23.8 torr at 25 Celsius. How many grams of N2 was collected? So what you need to understand is whenever you have a gas that's being collected over water, so let's say you have some water here, and we're going to have nitrogen gas above that liquid, there's going to be a small amount of water vapor. So what you need to realize is that the total pressure is not due to nitrogen alone. The total pressure is the sum of all partial pressures. We have two substances in the vapor phase. We have N2 and we have water. So you need to take into account the pressure that water exerts. As long as you do that, then you're fine. So we know the vapor pressure of water, which means we can calculate the partial pressure of nitrogen. That's the first thing you should do in a problem like this. In this example, the total pressure is 790. And this term, the vapor pressure of water, that's 23.8. So therefore, the partial pressure of N2 is just 790 minus 23.8. And so that's 766.2 torr. So now that we have the partial pressure of N2, we can use the ideal gas law equation to calculate the moles of N2, which can help us to calculate the mass of N2. So PV is equal to nRT. Now we need to convert this to ATM. So to do that, we need to divide it by 760. So 766.2 divided by 760, that's about 1.008 ATM. So now let's use this formula. So let's replace P with 1.008 and V is 37 liters. We have that here. Our goal is to calculate N. R is 0 0.08206. And the temperature is going to be 25C plus 273. So that's 298 Kelvin. Don't forget to always use the Kelvin temperature in this equation. So N is 1.008 times 37 divided by 0 0.08206. And then divide that result by 298. So it's going to be 1.525 moles. Now the last thing we need to do is convert moles into grams. Now nitrogen has an atomic mass of 14.01. So we need to multiply that by 2 to get the molar mass of N2. So that's going to be 28.02 grams. And so the molar mass, or rather the mass, is 42.7 grams of nitrogen gas. So this is the answer. Let's try this problem. Zinc metal reacts with excess hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas and zinc chloride. If 45 liters of H2 gas was collected over water at 22 Celsius at a total pressure of 755 torr, how many grams of zinc was consumed in the reaction? 
Well, let's write a balanced reaction. So zinc plus hydrochloric acid is going to produce H2, hydrogen gas, and zinc chloride, which is ZnCl2. So to balance it, all we need to do is put a 2 in front of HCl. And it's now balanced. So we can put a 1 in front of everything else. Now the first thing we need to do is calculate the partial pressure of H2. The only gases that we have, or the only substances that exist above the water, is hydrogen gas. It's collected over water plus the water vapor. The total pressure is 755 torr. And the partial pressure of water at 22 Celsius is 19.8 torr. So 755 minus 19.8 will give us a partial pressure for H2 that's 735.2 torr. Now let's convert that value to ATM. So just like before, we're going to divide it by 760. Seven thirty five point two divided by seven sixty is let's get rid of this point nine six seven four ATM. So now we can use this to calculate the moles of H two that was produced. So let's use the ideal gas law equation. P V is equal to NRT. So P is 0.9674. The volume, V, is 45 liters. R is 0 0.08206. And the temperature is going to be 22 plus 273, which is 295 Kelvin. So let's multiply 0 0.9674 times 45. And then let's divide it by 0 0.08206. And then take that result divided by 295. So N is equal to 1.798 moles of H2. Now that we have the moles, what we need to do is converted to the moles of zinc and then we can convert that to the grams of zinc and that will tell us how many grams of zinc was consumed in a reaction so let's start with 1.798 moles of H2 now the molar ratio between these two substances is 1 to 1 so for every mole of H2 that's produced one mole of zinc is consumed in a reaction and the molar mass of zinc is about 65.39 grams. And so all we got to do is take our answer, 1.798, and multiply it by 65.39. So it's 117.6 grams of zinc. So that's the mass of zinc that was consumed in this reaction. So this is the last question that we're going to go over in this video. KClO3 decomposes into KCl and O2 when heated. So let's write a balanced reaction. So we have potassium chlorate, and it decomposes into potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Now we have three oxygen atoms on the left and two on the right. The least common multiple between 2 and 3 is 6. So we need to get 6 oxygen atoms on both sides. So I'm going to put a 2 in front of KClO3 and a 3 in front of O2. Now notice that I have 2 potassium atoms on the left. So I need to put a 2 in front of KCl. And now the reaction is balanced. So now what is the mass percent 
of potassium chlorate in a 265 gram impure sample that produces 54 liters of O2 over water at 25 Celsius at a pressure of 775 torr when it undergoes a complete thermal decomposition reaction. And we're given the vapor pressure of water at 25 Celsius. So let's write an expression that gives us the total pressure of all the vapors in this problem. So we have oxygen gas and water vapor. The total pressure is 775 torr. We need to calculate the partial pressure of O2. And the vapor pressure of water is 23.8 torr. So we got to subtract 775 by 23.8. So the partial pressure of O2 is 751.2 torr. But we need to convert that to ATM. So we know that we got to divide it by 760. And so the partial pressure of O2 is 0.98. 8 ATM. So using the partial pressure of O2, we can calculate the moles of O2. And from that, we can calculate the grams of KClO3 that was consumed in a reaction. And once we have that, we could find the mass percent of KClO3 in the impure sample. So let's use the ideal gas law equation at this point. So the pressure is point 9884 multiplied by the volume of 54 liters. Here it is. And that's equal to N times R times the temperature. 25 plus 273 is 298. Point 0.9884 times 54. That's 53.8. 3736 and 0.08206 times 298 is 24.454 times n. So n is about 2.183 moles. So now we can use this equation to calculate KClO3. So let's start with 2.1 A3 moles of oxygen gas. Now the molar ratio between O2 and KClO3 is 2 to 3. So for every 3 moles of O2 that's produced, 2 moles of KClO3 is consumed in a reaction. So now let's convert that into grams. So we need to find the molar mass of KClO3. So we have one potassium atom, one chlorine atom, and three oxygen atoms. The atomic mass of K is 39.1, and for chlorine it's 35.45, and for oxygen is 16. So 3 times 16, that's 48. And then we need to add 35.45 and 39.1 to it. So you should get 122.55 grams per mole. So one mole of KClO3 is 122.55 grams. So now let's go ahead and calculate the mass. So 2.183 times 2 divided by 3 times 122.55. That's equal to a mass of 178.35 grams. So that's the mass of KClO3 that was consumed in a reaction. And if all of the KClO3 that's in an impure sample reacted, 
That's how many grams of potassium chlorate that existed in the impure sample. So we're going to divide it by the total mass of the impure sample, which is 265 grams, and then multiply it by 100%. This will give us the mass percent of KClO3 in that sample. So you should get a final answer of 67.3%. And so that's the mass percent.